Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video about the Works Library, I'm going to show you how to create and reference user variables in a Works Process component. Now, user variables allow you to control the properties of tasks as well as create conditions and processes. So let's start by building a simple layout. I'll go to the ECAT tab, expand Web Catalog by type, scroll down, and then click Works. From here, I'll find a Works Process component, and I'll go ahead and add that to the 3D world and I'll go ahead and add a works task control. Notice I'm using the same version of components, in this case version 3. I'll click fill to get a better view and center and zoom in on the works process component. How's it going? Alright, let's add some products to the 3D world. So go back to the ECAT tab and click products and containers here. Let's now find some products, so let's add a box to the 3D world. Let's now add a cube. There's the cube. And let's add one more component, so I'll add a cylindrical part. So now let's create a user variable that can control the types of components I can create in a task. So I'll select the works process component here. I'll go to the param tab. And notice there's a new subtip called user variables. So I'll click that. And notice here I can define a variable by giving it a name and a type. So the available types are real numbers, integers, strings, booleans, and distributions. Let's keep it simple for now, so I'll use a string variable. And I'll go and name it products, as in lowercase p. And to create the variable, I'll click define variable. And when I navigate back to the user variable subtab, you can notice that the new variable is listed below here. Great. I now need to reference the names of the components I want to create in the 3D world. So I have these three components here. So I'll click select and use the components drop down menu to see their names. So we have a box, a cube, and a part. Let's go and add those to our variables. So go over here to products, and I'll type box, comma, cube, comma, part, and press enter. So it's box, comma, cube, comma, part. What I can do now is reference this variable in a task. So I'll go to the general sub tab here, down to the task list, and I already have create selected. And for list of comp names, instead of typing in the names of components, I can just type in the name of the variable I want to reference. So in this case, I'll type in products, and then click Create Task. So when I run this simulation, let's slow it down first. You can see, bam, there are the products. So let's actually move the cube out of the way, so we can see what's inside. And yep, there's the other product. So now to edit the variable I just created to affect the types of components that are created, it's very simple to do. I'll reset the simulation, select the works process component, and instead of editing the task, I'll go to the user variable sub tab here, I'll go down to my user variable that I'm referencing, and I'll just edit this value. So instead of three types of components, let's just edit it to create a part. So I'll type part and press the enter key, and when I run the simulation, there's the magic. All right, let's go and stop the simulation and reset. I'm now going to show you how to create and edit a user variable during a simulation. For example, you may want to have a counter variable that controls the number of times tasks are executed in a sequence. So what I'll do is I'll go back to the ECAT tab and I'll select works and we'll add a new works process component. So let's go and drag that in. All right, let's get a better view. And let's go ahead and model this works process component as a conveyor. So I'll go to the param tab, geometry sub tab, and let's go ahead and get rid of the box, but let's make it look like a conveyor. So I selected the show conveyor checkbox here. And let's go ahead and adjust the length of the conveyor. So I'll go to the general sub tab and change the C length to, ah, let's do 1500. All right, let's now plug and play. So I'll plug this component into the end of that component. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some components in this works process component and transfer them out to flow along this conveyor line. And when the products reach this middle sensor here, I'll go ahead and change the material of the products for a certain number of times. So I'll select this works process component here. And in the general sub tab, I'll use a transport out task. And I'll just select the all checkbox here to just move everything out. So I'll create that task. And now I'll select this works process component here. And instead of creating a user variable now, what I can do is I can use an assign task. 
to go ahead and reference the user variable. So I'll go ahead and use a counter variable. So I use a lowercase c. And at the start of the simulation, I want the variable to be 0. So I'll click Create Task. And I only want to run this task once during the simulation at the start. So what I'll do is I'll create a warm-up task. So anything before the warm-up task will only be executed once at the start of the simulation. Then everything after the warm-up task will be you know, looped in the sequence. So now let's go ahead and create an if statement. And what this allows me to do is I can write an expression using Python expression syntax to create a condition. So if the expression returns a true value, then it will execute a subprocess here. If it returns a false value, then it will execute a conditional subprocess for the else. And the then and else properties are just labels for those subprocesses. So for my expression, what I'll say is if the counter is less than 5, then do what is true and then do what is false. So remember, you can write anything you want here just to label the subprocesses. So false could just be, you know, like chicken, <laughs> that sort of stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and create the task. And this will set up the syntax for me already. So if I go to insert new after line here, you can see if it's true, everything between line four and five will be executed. If it's false, everything will be executed there. So if it's true, what I'll do is I first want to increment the value of my counter, so I'll create an assign task, reference its name, and for the expression I can just type in counter, so I can reference the variable. I'll type a plus sign, one. So I'm going to increment the value of counter, and I'll create that task. And what that will do is it will increment the value of counter to eventually it's greater than five, and then everything in the false section here will be executed. Let's go ahead and create a change product material. And let's go ahead and use a product ID of 111. And let's turn them red. All right, so I'll create this task. And let's say if it's false, I'll reset the counter, and then it'll just loop back to my original subprocess here. So I'll select false. And let's go make an assign task. And instead of incrementing counter, we'll just set it back to zero. So I'll click Create Task. Now before we run this simulation, I'm just going to double check my work. I'll go to Insert New After Line to see all the tasks in my process. So at the start, I'm creating a user variable and setting its value to zero. I'm only going to execute that task once, and then I'll run this loop of tasks. But it seems I need to add a transport in task before I run this if condition. So I'll select the second task here of Warm Up. And a task list, let's go and create a transport in. And I'll select the any checkbox to transport in any type of component. And I'll click Create Task. And I'll also do something different as well. So after my conditional task runs here, I'll go ahead and add a transport out task for all types of products. So I'll select this all checkbox here and create the task. Let's now go to the ECAT tab. And let's go and add a conveyor. And I also need to make one small adjustment to the first works process component here. So I'll select it go to the Param tab, and when I create the products, I need to make sure that they have a product ID of 111. Now what I could do is delete the task and then just create it again. However, I can go and select it here in the Insert New After Line list, and its properties will be displayed here that I can edit them. So for New Product ID, I'll type in 111, and click this button here called Replace Task. So when I click it, you can see the value updates, and I also get feedback in the message panel here. You can also use this option to replace a task itself. So instead of creating the products, I could just insert a new type of task there to replace it. But I'm not going to do that. <laughs> all right. So let's go and run the simulation. Let's see how it all plays out. So we have a cylinder. It turns to red. It's moved out. Let's speed up the simulation just a bit. So that's two time. Give me three time. Yep, there's three time. Four time. All right. There's four. All right, five. It should do it one more time and not change the material. Yep. And now it should loop back, and there you go. Great. Now in some cases, you may want to execute tasks based on a random condition. For example, if I run the simulation, I know that the material of the product will be changed to red five times and then loop back. But what I can do is I can create a variable that randomly assigns a material to a product. And I'll show you how to do that now. I'll reset the simulation and select the works process component here. In the param tab, I'll click the user variable subtab here. 
And notice that the assigned task in this process automatically created the user variable of counter. Well, in this case, I don't really need it anymore. So what I can do is I can reference the name of the variable here in the name property and its type, and then click remove variable. What I can also do is click remove all variables, and that will remove every variable that's listed here in the component. But for now, I just want to delete one, so I'll click remove variable. And if I navigate back, yep, the variable's gone. So let's set up a distribution. So for type, I'll select distribution. And instead of counter, let's make it rand color for random color. So it's capital R and a capital C. And we don't need to worry about the units for the variable right now, so I'll just leave that blank and click define variable. I now need to navigate back to the user variables tab and click the distribution button here. And let's make this a uniform distribution. And I'll keep the default min and max values of 0 and 1. So I'll click close. Now let's set up the task, so I'll go back to the general subtab here. And let's go and remove all the tasks in this process, so no regrets, extreme, clear all tasks, they're all gone. So let's first transport in a product, so any type is fine. Click create task, and now let's go and set up a if statement, so if. And for our expression, if the random color, so rand color, is greater than 0.5. Let's actually make it less than 0.5. So if it's less than 0.5, execute the true, execute the false. But let's get these descriptive names. So I'll say red, blue. So I'll create the task, and there's the syntax. So if the value of my random variable is less than 0.5, I'm going to change the product's material to red, else I'm going to change it to blue. So let's set up those tasks now. I'll select red here. And let's go and create a change product material task. So product D of 111, and I already have red set up there, so I'll create the task. And now insert new after line, I'll select this blue subprocess task here where it starts, and I'll change the material name to blue, and create the task. And after I transport in a component, check the value of my random variable, and execute one of these subprocesses, I need to go ahead and transport out the part. So I'll select the last task here of eight, to insert a transport out task. So let's set up a transport out for all types of components, create the task, and let's go and test. So if I run the simulation, all right, it's red. What's it going to be next? It's blue. And it's blue again. Does it really like blue? It does like blue, and it's red. All right, this concludes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our community at community.visualcomponents.net. And as always, have a wonderful day.